Hey everyone and welcome to another episode of Anatomy of Drawing a Webcomic. Today is the fourth installment of my uh, webcomic De Joir and Imperial Prelude and uh, beginning next week there is going to be a slight change in the size of the panels that you're going to see but more of that next week. Uh, as you may have noticed this week I have changed the uploading days from Wednesday and Saturday to Tuesday and Friday simply because I feel like that's a little bit better and um, as always if you like what you see here please subscribe to my channel comment like and share the videos and if you want to see more of my work that is maybe not related to the uh, stuff that you see in the videos or maybe more of the work in progress please go to my Instagram it's at Sedat Özgen and my Facebook is at Sedat Özgen Art thank you very much and see you soon Bye bye. All right, so <clears throat> here I am starting with a tilted perspective grid um, using the one point perspective, and I am now starting to sketch out a character that is going to be very prominent in this panel. But I'm kind of having an issue or having issues figuring out how I'm going to illustrate this guy and I'm not happy with this stuff. So um, I am searching basically to find the right face and the right proportions for the character to make him look the way... <clears throat> I imagine him to look like and um, like this guy's face at that uh, particular moment and I'm giving him a you know sort of futuristic looking um, kind of face and I'm starting to sketch out some characters into the background and as you can already see despite this still being just a very rough sketch that there is a degree of uh, depth already in the drawing and which is now being emphasized by the fact that there are um, backgrounds now in uh, there are uh, um, buildings in the background now and I think it's coming along very nicely and uh, I am basically just adding things here and there in order to give it more depth and a little bit more details for the uh, penciling and inking stage but this is pretty much already finished and uh, I like how it has turned out and uh, I am turning those bl lines black now in order to print it out in, on my black and white printer and uh, yeah and I'm now starting the um, process of projecting it or tracing it onto my paper and um, as you will see that I am going to be uh, changing the design of uh, the character and uh, there's n no real reason behind it in the beginning but later on um, you will uh, um, understand why I did it because this is going to be sort of a you know not uniform but maybe dress code for some people on this part of the planet and in this area and uh, I'm you know I'm not married to the visual um, idea that I had before because you know basically these characters that are just side characters will be created on th on the go and uh, since they don't have a very important role 
in this series or in this comic idea I am just basically uh, you know not doing any pre-existing designs or pre-existing uh, concepts for them I'm basically just going and uh, you can see that I am structuring the second phase and since all of this was drawn during the uh, corona pandemic uh, pandemic I thought it would be kind of a nice irony to have a guy in there who's wearing some kind of a respiratory mask in there not being disrespectful but I thought you know uh, if we we're going to be living in a time now where people will get used to the idea of wearing masks maybe the future especially on other planets may look like that maybe people will in space on other planets maybe on exoplanets or some <clears throat> places that we will terraform have to wear masks maybe the air won't be as breathable as it is on earth or maybe it is breathable but some people may be afraid of viruses of all kinds of stuff you know and this is the 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 part that i love most about doing a science fiction book it's is that you when your science fiction is not bound to um, any historical settings or are not you know um, quote unquote not a NASA science fiction then you can go and create the stuff as you like and that's what I'm doing here and I love it I like it and this is what I wanted to to do the whole time I wanted to create something where I have full control over everything where I have full control over the characters how they look what they do what they say and nobody telling me what I can or can't do <clears throat> you know I don't mind um, being sometimes quote-unquote restricted to um, outlines by, by writers or other artists or an editor but I always feel like when I'm doing my own stuff that I'm doing my best work and this is practically or basically um, something that I believe in I believe that artists always do the best work when they are doing it by themselves and for themselves because um, you're never going to be as invested into some character that has been drawn by a million other artists then you will be um, drawing your own stories and this is this isn't you know to in order to talk down uh, pre-existing or established characters I love all these other great characters that exist but at some point you know uh, you want to be able to to tell your own story you want the world to hear your voice and this is kind of my approach to to doing it because you know I still am a freelance comic book artist and I work for other people and it's very important to to make your uh, clients happy and uh, I appreciate my clients but on the other hand I also want to do you know my own stuff where nobody can tell me what I can or can't do and uh, this is my creation this is my world this is my freedom and I can do whatever I want to do and I think that's really important for artists to have that ability or that chance and this is why I'm doing this webcomic I wanted to tell this story for a very very long time but I also wanted to tell it in my own way I didn't want you know to have someone else dictate me what's going to happen and I could have probably asked some writer to write this story for me but then again 
you know, I would have had to basically <laughs> line out the whole story for the for the writer. I would have, you know, would have had to have full control over the dialogues and all that stuff. And uh, I don't think any writer would want that. So I try to do it myself. I try to do everything as you know, as um, as independent or, uh, you know, from my own source of inspiration without any help and uh, nobody telling me what I can or can't do. And uh, I, I like where it's going. Other people may think differently, but hey, I'm happy. I'm liking that I'm doing it. And... I think that's that's really important to be able to um, leave everything behind you for just a little bit and dive into your own world, your own creation, your own decisions without without any restrictions from someone else. And this is this is why. I like doing this stuff and this is why I'm enjoying this stuff so much and this is actually why I continue to to do it because you know it seems like my pinups seem to have more um, or create more interest which is obvious because it's characters who have a fan base and who have been who have been ex 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 existing for oh my god for existing for many decades and all that stuff and with this um that's you know obviously not the case but it doesn't matter to me it doesn't i'm doing my best trying to create this stuff and uh, maybe at some point when the story starts unfolding people will be uh more interested in it maybe people will think oh Wow, I didn't see that coming. That was interesting, and maybe they liked the the worlds and the scenarios that I'm going to introduce to them. Maybe they won't, but who cares? You know, uh, for me, the most important thing is to do it, to get it out of my system, and I think that I'm doing my best, and I hope that certain people and uh, certain artists or friends will see this stuff and like it and uh, that's very important to me you know the the validation by your peers and the praise by your peers is usually what you as an artist are striving for the most and i think that Every artist, every writer, every musician, every person who's in some way or form creative will tell you the same thing. The most important or the most valued feedback and praise is usually by the people that you consider to be your peers. It doesn't mean that you that you don't um, that you don't like the praise from people who aren't artists or uh, from fans or whatever but it is always something different when somebody knows the craft when somebody knows how this uh, works and tells you hey I like this stuff or asks you hey how did you do this or that and I think that is really important and on another short note um, one thing that I wanted to talk about too is sometimes I get asked by aspiring artists what to do how can I improve as an artist what can I uh, do to become a better artist and so on and so forth and personally I don't think that I'm the right guy to approach in this regard because 
who am I? I'm just um, another artist on the internet and sometimes it feels like that some artists you know some aspiring artists are more looking for praise than they are looking for actual and real um, critique and feedback and uh, I personally think that I can't help them I can't help anyone the only thing that I can do is to point them towards maybe my videos because I can tell you a, mil a million things about how I would have done something that you've done differently and how I would tell a story how I would compose a picture how I would arrange a picture and how I would draw characters or whatnot and then there are these videos where you can clearly see what I'm doing you can understand by just looking at it why I'm making this and that decision and it makes sense and I won't have to explain anything to you but unfortunately I don't think that that a lot of the uh, uh, feedback requests and critiques are meant as as a means of learning something rather than just getting a little bit of positive feedback which of course is understandably or understandable but um, I think in the end the most important thing a, a an aspiring artist can do is to look at actual stuff you know comic pages and all that stuff and try to learn from that because man I can tell you two hours how to draw something or how not to draw something and then you can just go and look at pictures where you can see how the pose should have looked like or how to arrange a picture or how to give it depth and volume and all that stuff and I think luckily for especially young artists we live in a world where everything is ready ready and available for you if you are looking for something you will find it on YouTube you will find it on Instagram you will find it on Facebook and Google on and every, any other place and the question is just do you really want it and that is something that I highly doubt in many cases but whatever the case um, I think you can learn from these videos just as much as you can uh, from anyone else because there may be something that is likable or something that's educational in any, some way or form and I think that's that's something interesting and something cool and maybe if you guys like what you see maybe you will share it with your friends and recommend it to someone um, I am heading towards the end of the drawing here just adding a little a few um, highlights here and there and uh, if you like what you see please subscribe to my channel leave a comment like and also follow me on Instagram at Sedat Özgen and on Facebook at Sedat Özgen Art and um, thank you for tuning in I hope you guys had a great time this is the fourth installment of this war and soon there's going to be some new stuff Thank you for tuning in. Bye-bye.